in this video we're talking all things lofted chip shot around the green so i'm going to be talking about why you have to be good at this shot some common mistakes i see in the poorest chippers teaching golf on the range and also the technical pointers that i look for and see often in good chippers so if you stick around to the end i'm going to show you three of the best drills that are going to help improve your chipping technique and see you getting up and down more out on the course okay so the basic lofted chip so i've got a 58 degree wedge here I'm going to hit most of my basic lofted chip shots with a 58. Tour players are going to use generally their 58 or their 60, depending on what they play. It's generally with a lob wedge, so can't be scared of that club. It's not just for bunkers or extreme situations. We're going to use this around the greens because it's going to give us lots of control, lots of spin. So dust off the lob wedge and, and let's get at it. So this is the most common shot you're going to use when you miss the green to the left or to the right. If you miss the green short, then generally there's nothing in front of the green you're going to be able to use a, a less lofted club hit it low no danger and just chase it on and, and bump and run it up to the flag but if you miss left and right you're generally going to see some elevation change there's going to be bunkers and if you don't go in the bunker you then you're going to have to go over something and get the ball to stop on the green so this is a shot that we have to know how to play it's it's really common that tour players when they're playing on the pga tour or any tour for that matter they use the basic lofted chip for 95% of their shot. Quite common nowadays for a player like Jordan Spieth to use his lob wedge for pretty much every single shot around the green. He uses his lob wedge like a magic wand. He uses it so much that he knows exactly what length swing produces what length shot. If you can get used to using loft and using the same club repeatedly, then that club for you is, is going to be like a fail safe. You're going to always fall back, right, I grab my lob wedge, I'm comfortable with that shot. And you're going to feel like you can hit the ball close quite regularly. So this is something that A, we have to be able to do just because we're going to face that situation quite a lot. But B, it really helps your game if you're comfortable doing it because it is a shot that once you're good at it, you see it a lot more. And actually, because we're using loft, we're using spin, the ball's not going to run out very far and we're going to get the ball to stop near the hole a lot more often. But what is such a short swing? I see an awful lot of faults with players with this shot. I actually find that sometimes in a longer swing, you can make more mistakes, but because there's more time to correct them, you get away with them a lot more. But when you're chipping around the green, certainly with loft, if you have a technical error, because you don't have as much time to correct it, what happens is you suffer for it more. And that's when people end up with the yips. That's why they put the lob wedges away is because they've got one, error that they then don't compensate for and hitting a duff chip or knifing it across the green is really embarrassing so players will just opt out of ever doing that um, which is the wrong thing to do so if we just run through some common faults and, and why they're not helpful just before we get onto the good stuff so first thing that i see all the time is a, is a closed face takeaway now this takes away all the loft from the club and actually exposes the leading edge and if the face is too short then the, the club is just gonna dig and stop. We're gonna hit some of those awful, like duff shots where the club doesn't go anywhere, the ball only goes a foot, and sometimes you'll even double hit it, you'll stub it, and that all happens because the face is shut, which takes away all the bounce. Something else I see that I don't like is a player with really stiff wrists. None of the best chippers in the world have ever chipped with stiff wrists. If anything, they've got the softest hands, the softest wrists, the softest elbows and that just helps them control the loft, control the bottom of their swing. Um, so we, we can't be stiff on these shots. Oh, hey, you're still here. Thank you. So most of you guys watching this are not subscribers. And although the few subscribers that are watching this, thank you very much for being here. I could really do with the help. If you subscribe, like, and comment, even if you think I'm stupid, that really boosts the engagement and helps get this video out to more people and helps me grow. So anything you can do to help, that'd be great. The next thing that I see an awful lot when with, with poor chippers is a, a very static body. So they get into position and they've obviously hit a few duff shots. So they sort of think, right, if I just don't move my body now, I can't hit it poorly. But again, good touch doesn't come from anything. Hitting that sort of soft controlled chip shot is all about having you know, being a bit dynamic in your body motion. All good chippers sort of, they shift their body back and through. Victor Hovland improved his chipping dramatically by learning to move his body forwards in the backswing. So we can't stay static. And the final thing that I absolutely despise golfers do that never ever helps is keeping their head down. Now, this is like one of those things where 
Golfers have been told this for generations, probably since the game was invented. What's happened over time is golfers have gotten to a place where their head stays down for so long that they actually don't even look to see where the ball's gone, which is ludicrous. I can't believe people actually do that. Again, you never see the best players in the world do this, so I can't understand why people think it's a good idea. The head, when you swing through, actually should move up. Yes, that's right, your head should come up when you're chipping because that allows you to release your wrist angles shallow the arc and add loft and that gives us that high soft chip shot so don't keep your head down right now that i've got off my soapbox we can get into what i like to see with players chipping so first thing i like to see is a nice narrow stance and stood quite close to the ball i like to see the heel of the club maybe slightly in in the air the toe of the club down because there's just a little bit more bounce over that toe side that's going to help the club skid on the grass so then, once we start swinging, I actually want to see three different things. So the first thing is I want to see the club face open. I want to see the toe pointing up to the sky. I'm actually looking at the grooves, and I want the grooves to be 90 degrees to the ground. And that's how I know that the face is open, um, or square to slightly open. I never want to see the club face looking down like this. The other thing I like to see is, I like to see a little bit of wrist set. Um, I don't want people to be sort of long in the left arm and long in the left wrist. I want to see the club move up quickly, move up and open quickly. And the final thing which really is going to freak people out is as the club's moving up and open with wrists, uh, I actually want to see your weight shift forwards. And what that's going to do is that's going to move our low point ahead of the ball. That's a massive key. And that is what is going to allow us to hit the ball before the ground, shifting that weight forward. It was this move that pulled Victor Hovland's chipping off the trash heap and allowed him to hit those shots in the Ryder Cup, hit those shots in the FedEx Cup that allowed him to be so successful. He, he went from a very static stiff wrist to a very wrist set, shift left, and, and then from that top position where we're wristy, we've got the face open and we're left-sided, it's really easy to just like drop the club on the ball and stand up through the shot, open wrist and left, and then we're just gonna stand up and let it go. We're almost gonna like let that club head drop, uncock the wrists and stand up at the same time. So open wrists and left, and then uncock and stand up and it really is as simple as that if you look at like the great chippers of all time like donald lazabal sevi they're all pretty soft with their wrist angles they all play with an open face and they always finish they always finish high in the follow-through they never are down they never stay low they're always moving up because that allows them to shallow the arc deliver loft hit the ball higher so on the way back we're open hinge and left on the way down we're uncock and stand up so open hinge and left and I can pretty much guarantee that I'm going to strike the ball first I'm hitting these shots with loads and loads of spin and once you get comfortable making those moves open hinge and left uncock and stand up. once you get comfortable doing that you're going to strike the ball pretty good every time. You're going to hit the ball higher. You're going to hit the ball with spin. And you're going to gain some confidence to be able to almost throw the ball at the flag a little bit more. Play more aggressively with those shots. And you're going to find yourself hitting the ball closer and closer and closer. So there are a couple of drills I really like that can help you improve your chipping strike. Uh, or just help you hit that basic lofted chip. So the first one is, you're just hitting some shots with your trail hand only. So in order to do that, because we now have less control over the club, you're gonna, you feel the weight of the club a lot more and what it's gonna force you to do is hinge your wrist a little bit more. And as you're doing that, you can just consciously think about opening that face up. And generally, so people with the chipping yips will often go to chipping right hand only, just because for some reason doing that allows them to use their wrist better, release the club better, and no longer hit those like stabby, yippy shots that, that send the, the ball hurtling over the green it just you know it shallows the club out it helps us keep the face open and just allows us to use our wrist better i actually like to do that in like my pre-round warm-up just hit five or ten chips right hand only just to get the, the feeling of the club head swinging 
using the wrists a bit better feel the the bounce of the club hitting the ground and not digging the next drill that i like that's also going to help the wrist hinge and the face open is like a split hand drill where in your trail hand all you're going to do is grip the club with your thumb and forefinger so you can sort of see that there's a much more of a, a push and a pull there's a much more lever um in the in the wrists as i take the club away and that's if i also just allow that face to open a fraction that's going to get us into that perfect takeaway position so hinge up that was a bit late hinge up I, I didn't release that down so open it up release it down um, and then the third the third drill I, I really like is actually a pause drill so this is something that you might do with your full swing but I want you to incorporate it into your chipping as well and what you're going to do is you're going to take the club back and you're going to stop at the top of your swing and you're going to check that you've shifted your weight forwards and you've got the face open and then from there you can then just down cock and stand up that was a bit thin as well because i didn't down cock enough but that's a brilliant drill just to make sure that you, you the club face is in the right place before you start down it's really really easy for players to get shut and then stuck so that pause drill just allows you to take a second check it's in the right place and then carry on and if you do those three drills, you're going to find your lofted chips improve significantly.